In this demo, we'd like to show you PostHoc, a debugging visualizer for pathfinding search and more. Keep in mind PostHoc is work in progress, and things may change from what we show you today. When someone mentions search, it's quick to imagine it as finding a way to get from point A to point B. First, we examine the set of choices we have. Now we ask which sequence of decisions would lead to the goal. But search or sequential decision making manifests in many contexts and disciplines. From solving a Rubik's Cube to planning the actions of hundreds of cooperative robots, people want to understand search, and it only gets harder as algorithms get more sophisticated. PostDoc is a visualization framework that can help with this. It sets itself apart by giving you the power to see exactly what you want for your unique problem. Let's get started. Researchers are constantly in a cycle of coming up with, implementing, and debugging their ideas. When we want to find out about how our program works, we usually bring out the debugger. But while traditional debuggers are helpful in debugging your code and verifying low-level correctness, it doesn't make it easy to understand your program on an algorithmic level. How often do you scratch your head and say, I just don't get why my agent doesn't take this obviously shorter path? So what do we do? Well, one common practice is to chuck print statements everywhere and try to record the program's decisions. But even the most thought out and well formatted logs are just that. The onus is on the researcher to interpret hundreds and thousands of lines of logs and relate them back to the problem. It would be nice if we could explore our algorithm in a visual way. Sometimes there happens to be an off-the-shelf visualizer that we could use. But most of the time our only choice is to develop one from scratch. Especially if we're working on an exciting new technique. It's likely we want to see information an existing visualizer would never have thought about, or in ways it might not support. Search problems and visualizations go hand in hand, because they typically run in some spatial context, like a video game map or a warehouse on a road network. Even without context, the way Search explores a problem space is rather human-like. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. So whenever we want to visualize search, it is always helpful to start with a tree. PostLog is a visualization tool we want to make as in reach as writing logs or using a debugger. It is decoupled from any solver or domain. Instead, we give you the tools to record, describe, and replay your algorithm in problem space, help you find problems visually, and garner brand new insights. If you're keen on using PostLog in your own work, here's how it fits in. First, you generate a search phrase, a human-readable record of the steps that your algorithm took. A bare minimum search trace requires only a unique identifier for each event and a reference to its parents. For a single agent search, you'll probably want to output steps like generating, expanding, closing, etc. With a bare minimum search trace, you can already visualize this in PostDoc as a decision tree. But let's make the deal even sweeter. You can annotate the log with simple drawing instructions to render domain-specific visualizations. For a single agent grid search, it might look like this. It pretty much says, I want to render a square for each recorded event at the specified coordinates. You can also include additional labels like G and F values for purposes of inspection or debugging. Now, just chuck this into PostDoc and watch it come alive. It's up to you to decide what's important for understanding and analyzing the decision-making process. You might want to record an event every time your algorithm branches or improves a bound, or every time it commits to an action. PostLog requires no installation or configuration to get started, but we also provide toolkits for popular languages to help you generate search traces and make PostDoc work for you. Now, let's see how different people might use PostDoc in their projects. Ryan is a researcher developing a single agent search algorithm, DPS. DPS works like this. Each expansion takes the current shortest path, where it identifies a single intersecting obstacle. Then it produces two successive paths. We modify the expanding path to tightly bend around the obstacle on two sides. Ryan needed to check if his algorithm works, and he decided to start by using a visualization. So Ryan took a bit of time to modify the output of his solver to produce search traces. All he has to do now is to drag the search trace into PostDoc. So what I showed you just then was what Ryan ended up with. He decided to show the current polygon as magenta, tentative segments as red, and final segments as green. 
It's quick to use postdoc to check for obvious errors, like successes should only generate on the vertices of the current polygon, and in an intuitive sense, the path should always appear taut. If the path keeps wrapping around a single obstacle or a few polygons, then something's definitely fishy. These will be things that are obvious in a visualization, but much less so as output, logs, or in a debugger. If Ryan spots an error, he could inspect the search event by event to piece together what caused it. Ryan recorded additional information like piecewise lengths for different parts of a single event, which he could click on to check out. Ryan is happy that this output looks correct. Of course, Ryan can continue to use logs, assertions, or a traditional debugger to narrow down problems if he finds them. Yue is a researcher working on multi-agent path planning with a chance of execution delays. She wants to demonstrate to her new colleague Kevin about a particular problem with a state-of-the-art approach called Minimal Communication Policy, or MCP. MCP works by assigning dependencies between agents, and when one agent suffers a delay, dependent agents will wait until the previous agent is clear to continue. While MCP guarantees success, it can lead to chains of delays. To show the new colleague this phenomenon, Yue decides to use postdoc demonstratively. Since Yue's software is already outputting events as JSON, she just has to tweak her output to match our search trace format and write the renderer binding, which in her case consists of only four primitives. Notice that US search trace records events relevant to her use case. Rather than expand, generate, close like in a single agent search, in her scenario, events are related to checking, moving, and clearing agents in a grid map. Let's get a quick idea how to interpret this visualization. I've set up a breakpoint rule to skip cleared events. These events are responsible for clearing an agent before drawing them at the new position, and we just want to see the clear and draw as a single step. Here we see that agent 0 wants to move south. However, it must wait for agent 316 to move as it is currently in a cell. Luckily, agent 316 is moving immediately west, so agent 0 follows along, just as we planned. We're using blue to represent a planned move, grey to represent a successful move, and red for delays. Look at how quickly delays seem to pile up. And look at these regions. We can kind of observe that delays appears in chains. Now, Kevin has a better understanding of MCP. Mike is a research fellow working with Yue on multi-agent pathfinding. And one of his recent works computes optimized traffic flow assignments for navigating hundreds to thousands of robots in an automated warehouse. Mike wants to optimize traffic flow by minimizing opposing traffic, which tends to cause agents to have to wait. At such a scale, seeing the individual decisions by agents may not be too useful. So Mike decides to use postdoc to holistically compare how traffic flows are assigned using different techniques. He executes his algorithms, drags the output trace file into the visualizer, and the visualizer draws a heat map showing how congested each area of the map is. Unlike Ryan and Yue, Mike uses postdoc to compare entire solutions. The heat map Mike created not only shows the congestion at each location, but also shows the traffic flow directions and how busy traffic per direction is using these arrows. He can then compare the traffic flow computed by different algorithms and gain insights. Here, he first visualizes the traffic flow assigned by a greedy approach, where the middle of the map is more congested than the other areas. In general, the map is full of opposite arrows indicating opposite traffic that causes severe congestion. The second map is produced by an approach that prohibits opposite traffic, where only single traffic flows are assigned. This significantly reduces congestion between robots and improves efficiency of the whole warehouse. Mike reckons this approach can still be improved if he allowed a small amount of opposite flow, since some routes seem underutilized. He soon found that his third approach does in fact improve efficiency, and here's this approach visualized. Because we're making it easier to create visualizations, it only makes sense that they should be equally easy to share. We'll soon allow you to submit your creations for the whole world to discover. We invite you to engage the wider community in your latest research through visualization. So, there we go. We've shown you an exciting visualizer that is easy to get started with, yet powerful enough to support complex use cases. And regardless of what you're working on, we hope that Postdoc will be a part of your problem-solving toolkit.